You know, you wish we could all be like Johnny Depp. You could die dead. Like we could be like Johnny Depp, Bill Murray, people like that who drop out. Be like Eddie Murphy, be like Joe Rogan who drop out and somehow make it big. What did it say about me? What does that say about me? I am not much. I am a wash up, I guess. During the 1960s, people thought I'd be great. Now here I am, washed up. I lie down. I can't afford my own studio, hence the background noise. And all I have is you, you, and you. I have three people right in front of me. You ever have that feeling when things don't go your way? You, you, you just feel like you just can't handle it anymore. You just sit down. You, you just stop. You stop. I bet that feeling. I bet that feeling. Just and I hear every, no one around me has any commonality with me. It's like I give an idea and I get hit. I give an idea and I get hit. And the guy realizes if he had been any more goofy towards me, he would have been thrown. It was me. I was comedian in that stunt. I was a comedian. You may wonder what I'm talking about. What am I talking about? You see, a few days ago, I was at the comedy club. I said something, but I never apologized. And I laid back down. They're getting over sensitive, I think. And the audience came and they apologized to me. The audience apologized to me for making me apologize to other people. See, I, I just don't know it anymore. It's like as I sit, I see the stars. I've tried. I've tried endless times to get the audience to notice me through YouTube. They, they don't think I'm funny. They don't think I'm funny. They see me. They see myself. They see everything around me. If I had been any less funny, people would just call it drama. So people would come up and they ask me, when well, is this going to become comedy? So then what do I say? I just lie down and I say, maybe never, maybe never. You see, if someone is articulate enough to tell me they don't find me funny, I hope they, well, it's better than them telling me I'm brilliant and me falling apart. So here I lie. I had this scene to be a comedian. They say once you realize you're inadequate, you can you're funny. I'm not much. I am not much. I am not much. All you see is a bunch of wavy hair, a bunch of skin, a bunch of feet. You see all of this? You see it? Then people just want to come up to me and they expect to, through a series of misunderstandings, get the moral high ground above me. They want to get the moral high ground over me. They want the moral high ground. <sighs> I'm in a room surrounded by strangers. 
the last thing I want is one of them to leave. They have other things to do. They don't want to see me. I try to make people laugh. I try to get people to have a laugh at me. But I can't. I can't. But they should. I mean, look at me. Mediocrity has become my strong suit. And wash up. My girl left me. She went on to be a neurosurgeon. You see, the reason why you hear background noise is because I can't afford my own studio, which just goes on to prove my point that I am a mediocre who can't get people to follow him. You see my face? See everything here? Some people argue I should be one of those people. They can make an adult cartoon out of me. They can show me an adult cartoon me. I could be one of the people sitting down in adult cartoons having a nice time. You know, like they have like Family Guy, American Dad, shows like that. I could be, I could be the next Peter Griffin. You see, you see. And watch me if you have guts. You have the guts to to see mediocrity in its highest. Come on, come on, come on. Come and watch me. Come and watch me. Come and watch me. Come and watch me.